Free will, determinism, or perhaps braided will. Is it semantics, logic fallacy, or what the fuck? Welcome back to Beyond Psychology. Arbitrarily Adam here. Today we're going to look at the free will versus determinism debate that seems to be so popular among certain circles today. Before we get started, it may be helpful for you to watch the Emergent Consciousness series. Follow the link and we will continue when you're done. Okay, welcome back, or let's move on. I've observed many sides of this topic, and I've thought about it for a long time. As I don't just fill in the blanks with random opinions, I've waited to share this until I felt I knew what I was talking about. So first off, we should acknowledge that reducing something as complex as our behavior to something like free will versus determinism is both a bifurcation as well as an oversimplification logic fallacy, perhaps even overconfidence cognitive bias. I think that the people who argue this subject have identified it as a topic that no one can prove either way. And because no one can prove it, they are safe to have an endless debate. In the high school debate team bullshit paradigm of our status quo driven, popular, supposedly reasonable discourse. I see childish behavior. One party says, well I don't know. And the other party says, well I don't know either. And then they both agree to argue incessantly like a four year old and a jackass. So I have to ask, why is that? After thoroughly examining this puzzle, the following was observed. People are addicted to confrontation, raised on Jerry Springer and soap operas. They are brainwashed with sports-driven mentality. We are raised on sports and conditioned to chase a win. There's a lot of ego inflation, and even stranger, this is all connected to the great debate. A theist says to the atheist one day that God gave us free will to choose whether we want to believe in him or not and to choose whether we sin or stay pure. The atheist replies, but I thought all of this was part of God's plan. So if everything is God's plan, then how is any of that free will? You're a moronic Jesus freak. Usually the atheist is correct when they are debating with the theist, but in this case the only thing they're right about is that the theist is moronic. The atheists get a kick out of popping the theists' ignorant ideas with bits of scientific literacy and rationality. The atheist feels good about themselves and inflates their ego with every presumed point they score. In this childish game, the theists delude themselves into thinking they have won at the same time, proving the ridiculousness of it all. The atheists also know how important it is that they get society to abandon their archaic beliefs in fairy tales, seeing as everything atheists have tried to tell theists fails to get them to abandon their Christ psychosis, atheists have cherry-picked these statements in order to tear down organized religion. It was an act of desperation. Unfortunately, atheists are being cognitively biased and completely unscientific in their approach to prove that free will doesn't exist. It's okay, atheists. Religious people can still be borderline retarded as well as completely insane while still being correct that free will exists. Every point they make is the monkey chucking poo. Just because one turd sticks to the glass doesn't mean that they're right about anything else. Causation is not always coalition. Yes, theists are moronic and frustrating, but don't allow their stupidity to infect your mind's ability to arrive at accurate conclusions. Now let's look at the complex facts of the matter. In reality, there is actually no debate to be had here, other than one of semantics, or perhaps a probabilistic determination of the fluctuating variety. We have concepts and descriptive words like determinism and free will. There is no debate as to whether those descriptive items exist. Seeing as they exist, we have to have a definition for them, so that we know what we are communicating. Can we prove that everything is either deterministic or a product of free will? The answer is no. You can't actually prove that everything is deterministic and that there is no free will involved at all with our actions. So we might as well agree on what the definitions of those two things are. See what I mean? It's actually a debate over semantic definitions and not a debate as to whether or not free will exists. Realistically here, if you're going to attempt to prove that free will didn't exist, then you would have to build several Earths as control groups to scientifically and definitively prove that there is no free will. Once you have those Earths, you're going to have to identify what free will is and remove it to display a world with nothing but determinism. And seeing as that you can't even prove that it exists in the first place, you can't claim to know what it is and therefore you wouldn't be able to remove it from your test Earths. 
So you see, there is no proving it one way or the other. You also can't remove this concept of free will from the minds within our society. So again, we're going to have to understand what's being observed and arbitrarily labeled as free will. So as to the questions, are these issues semantics, logic fallacy, or what the fuck? The answer is yes, yes, and fucking hell yes. As a side note, I want people to observe that I regularly state that the only opinion that has value is the opinion that opinions are valueless. But I discovered that opinions actually do have value in one particular application, and that application is semantics because semantics are just arbitrary labeling. The best we can do is observe what things are doing and try to describe that while reasonably accepting that we really don't know what they are and that we are not as sure as we would like to be about much of anything. A complex probabilistic view is one of accuracy and definitive claims are the product of logic fallacy unless the claim is about physical functions. Back to the task at hand, sorry. Just had to share that epiphany. On to the what the fuck part of the equation. We can clearly observe that an awful lot of our reality is indeed deterministic because we cannot claim to have control over much of our environment or our biological state. I don't think that any actions we perform are completely free will, but nor are those actions completely deterministic. I also think that claiming that an individual person is exercising free will alone is an oversimplification logic fallacy. Free will is not possible without consciousness, and the level of awareness that a form of biology is capable of channeling from the pool of our collective knowledge, combined with mental complexity level, dictates the amount of free will that can be braided into the determinism. And all of our choices are the product of group thinking. Here's a simple example or experiment. An experiment that is completely in line with the what the fuck of these thoughts. Now kids, don't try this at home. Remember, I'm a professional. Okay, if someone tells me that everything is determinism, and I plan to immediately kick them in the balls, then tell them that they can't be mad at me because it's not my fault. I don't exert free will because it doesn't exist, and I didn't choose to kick them in the balls. I'm just a product of determinism. I have absolutely no control. Obviously, we can observe this as bullshit, but I did not choose to have a leg or a foot, and my victim did not choose whether or not they had balls. I did not choose to have the ground on which I stand in order to gain the footing for all of this nut-punching goodness. So there is some level of determinism braided in with my plan to kick them in the balls. See? Part determinism and part free will. A braid. No, no, no. Not braided testicle hair. Not quite that level of what the fuck that I was referring to. I know where your minds are going. You stop it now. Or don't stop it, it's hilarious. You have the free will to allow your mind into the gutter all you like. All right, now let's move on to the more scientific clarity of the subject. Warning, incoming complexity. Free will is an emergent property as a result of complexity of the phenotype expressions of our biology and combined with our detailed knowledge pools. When observing an action, we must analyze all threads of cause and effect that produced the outcome. There are threads of determinism, physical obstacles, genetics, biology, ecosystem, etc. Then there are threads of choice, aka free will. Expressions of complex biological consciousness gain freedom of mobility as well as sensory processing. At this level of complexity, there are more threads of free will braided into every action. Now in regards to the emergent consciousness classification system in the recommended series, the ability for multi-dimensional thinking combined with awareness allows for the type of cause and effect analysis that yields a plan of action for future events. When we are simple forms of biology, most of what we do is reactionary, and that is not what I would define as free will. Nor is our genetic memory. Or is it? Tier 2 life forms like ants are mostly reactionary with a couple of threads of free will. For example, fight or flight is a reflex with a tiny thread of choice. There is cause and effect analysis, and there is an amount of awareness of which yields more than one possibility of action. But because there are only two choices, it is very limiting, hence only a thread of free will. I am aware that we label or perceive the fight or flight as a reflex and not a conscious decision. Perhaps it is just a reaction, or perhaps it's just genetic programming, or perhaps our genetics have a very simple form of choice making and reasoning. I'm getting off course again, and this is topic for another video, possibly. Anyway, moving on. When we observe Tier 3 consciousness, we see a more varied braid, with the increase in awareness yielding options for more actions. 
Wolves, for example, are not limited to the options of merely running down their prey or waiting for their prey to run by. The wolves are aware of many different options, and they analyze cause and effect in their environment in order to help them freely choose the best way to do things at a given moment. And then when we get to average humans at Tier 4 awareness, we are tapping into combined knowledge pools that we have recorded over time, which drastically increases our awareness. And with the increase in complexity of our brains as well as our sensory organs, we are able to analyze cause and effect with greater detail. High definition thinking, if you will. This allows us to predict some instances in the future, what I call the Nostradamus effect. Then we can produce a detailed plan of action. When we reach a level of Tier 5 Manipulator, we replace even more of the determinism in our brain because we recognize where we can alter our environment as to increase the amount of opportunities available of which we will take advantage of in the future. With every manifestation, we remove a little more of the determinism to the point where it's more half and half braid of the two. Some examples of this are religions and geopolitics as well as weaponized psychology, which religion actually falls under the classification of weaponized psychology, as does advertising and propaganda. Topics for future videos. Back to free will. At the level of tier 5 consciousness, we do not choose the course that our planet takes through the universe. We do not choose our biological form or our genetics. We do not fully control all aspects of our biosphere, but there is a tremendous amount that we are controlling. And as time passes, we will likely control the things listed above, including changing our course in space. We are already beginning to change our ecosystems, for better or for worse. We are beginning to change our biological forms, and likely we will master our genetics. We will choose our environment as well as our biological forms. We will even choose the biological forms that exist with us. We are already partially doing that with selective breeding practices. One last thought in regards to free will and religion before I give my closing thoughts. As our minds and knowledge pools increased in size and complexity, we became aware that we didn't know what we were or where we came from. And scarier still, we didn't know what anything was. When faced with this terrifying axiom of our existence, we chose to believe in gods. That choice was a massive example of free will, but ironically enough, that act of free will ended up removing a large percentage of our ability to exert free will, and hindered the development of our minds because of the mentally stagnating, imprisoning effect of such a deluding perception. Ironic hypocrisy at its best. In regards to our laws, we oftentimes blame the individual far too much when we need to factor in the environmental stimuli that is more largely the determining factors of that behavior, rather than trying to punish the individual with a whack-a-mole strategy that is merely a treatment and not a cure. But that's not to say that we can't hold an individual somewhat responsible because they know what their actions are going to cause, and they do it anyway. They are still to blame. But if we want to fix our issues, we must start to manipulate our environment so we don't cultivate that type of behavior. Now in closing, I hope that what I've offered to the world ends the childish debate because we can use this bit of semantics as our accepted definition of free will. Perhaps the statements and concept of free will is an oversimplification, and perhaps determinism cannot be the lone origins of our behaviors. Perhaps we should regard our will as braided will. If we're going to say that braided will is the new status quo driven acceptable terminology for communication purposes, then we will need to put free will as well as religious beliefs in anthropology class. The history of stupid things we used to say and believe. Is that a class? Well, it fucking should be. Now a prediction for the future of, or perhaps even a plan of free will for all consciousness. Emerging complexity as a result of evolution and our accumulated knowledge pools, as well as merging our minds into the mass processing device. Determinism of the universe will be unraveled and we will be left with free-flowing strands of will waving in a chaotic deterministic wind of change, with a couple of rebel bangs of natural biology affecting our course ever so slightly from time to time, but only for a moment until we decide to trim them in an act of free will. Do what you want with all of this, it's your choice. Thanks for choosing to watch this video. I hope that you choose to share it also. Until next time, have a good one.